morning. How are you? Good morning. Hi, Claudine. How do you say your name? Claudine. Love it. I love it. So, Claudine, this is Aisha. Aisha, Claudine. Nice to meet you again. You too. So, so thank you very much for your time. I wanted to take this time today as someone, I work as a mindset coach, but really as someone from the heart to say that when we met via a networking group, I was very humbled and my heart was warmed when I listened to your story and what you do with your business and what led you to it. And that prompted me to say, would it be okay if I asked you some questions and to just have a really sort of informal, small interview so that anybody who watches this can learn a bit about you and your story and what you're doing to make an impact um, on people's lives with your business. So that's why we're here today, right? Right, and thank yeah. you for the great opportunity um, because I was actually looking for a way to reach more people and kind of be more sincere and you know just let them know how important what I do really is and how it can affect everybody in a matter of a second. And you don't think it's going to happen to you. We never do until something happens. And then you're like, your world is turned upside down. So on that, I mean, I say it with a smile, but on that, I experienced um, losing my mother at a very, I was like 15 when she became sick and then 25 when she actually passed away and then left. But I had 10 years with her. And that I think is the key difference with the stories because um, for me, I had I knew that she wasn't well. I didn't really imagine that she wouldn't be there one day, but it gave me a lot of what felt like a lot of life and time in our lives together. And then I listened to you and I, I would just, you know, let's just say, tell people who are listening, tell them your story so that they can listen to what impacted you and what's made you be the person that you are today and what you're doing with that. Well, my story started um a little bit about maybe four service. I was a manager. I worked in a cafeteria and that didn't work out basically and I started all over and I was looking for, you know, a new career, something that I was very passionate about and it led me to the financial service world. So I started doing financial services which was tax planning and now I'm a life insurance agent, a licensed life insurance agent. And I just realized one day, you know, after I had a traumatic event with my family, how much I really could help people and secure their lives. And it was like a wake up call. You know, I was like, oh, my God, because everybody just thinks, oh, that's, you, you know, you want to sell them something you want. You want to make them buy something they don't need. But at the end of the day, you know, it's a conversation and it'll protect you and your family and you don't even think about it. So my goal is to reach more people and more families and just to talk to them and let them know, hey, you know, of course I'm an agent, but at the end of the day, my goal is helping and protecting you and your assets. Because if something happens to you, you know, it can change your life. You know, how are you going to pay the bills? Um, And I, I'm in a similar situation. You know, my son, was in an accident and, you know, he was shot up like oh, maybe 14 or more times. So just let me pause you a bit. Um, Cause you got, you have an American accent and I'm British. You said shot up, right? Yes. You mean yes. he was shot? Yes, he was in his vehicle and his vehicle was shot. Him yeah. and um, two of their friends was in a vehicle and somebody just pulled up and yeah, sprayed bullets and he was on the driver's side and um it's okay take that's, I'm sorry that's a tough thing for me as a Brit it's really um we just are not used to this sort of thing is very unfamiliar we do not experience our daily lives where we go around I say Brit I'm British I live in Germany in Europe but we generally don't have a culture where this happens and that's probably pretty much one of the reasons I wanted to get you to talk um and tell your story because we all have hearts and when something impacts someone close to us then it impacts us and it impacts those around us. And this is what's happened to you because your son was shot, you said 15, up to 15 times? Yeah, I mean, maybe even more because um, a lot of the bullets went through and through. Um, so yeah, so he had like 14 holes or so in his body and he, um, he has still has a bullet lodged in his spine. So there was only one bullet left that they couldn't remove. And is he okay? 
he's doing great. I mean, considering, so he's able to walk. So he's, you know, day by day, he's getting a little stronger, but he's walking, thank God for that, because, you know, that could have went so many different ways, um, but it didn't, so I'm grateful. So now I'm just taking everything else, you know, one day at a time. But that's kind of when I realized, you know, I was like, wait a minute, you know, I had to stop working. So I, you know, my main focus was to take care of him and make sure he was okay. And I didn't care about anything else. I mean, everything stopped for me for a time frame. And just one day I just realized, you know, wait a minute, like if this can happen to me, this can happen to anybody. But I'm in a position now where I can help people that's in a similar situation where they don't have to worry about how they're going to pay the bills because they'll have something in place to help them if something like a any life-changing event you need to be prepared for and that just kind of made me push to kind of talk to more people um to reach more people than I could after that happened to me because I'm very reserved person and I'm like you know I don't really do social media I don't really do lives yeah well, you're doing yeah. well here. High five. <laughs> Come on, high five. Or finger five. High five. Let's do four finger five. Come on. Four <laughs> finger five. Come on. Yeah. You make it so you make it so easy. I mean, you just make it so easy to talk to. And you know, being also in the group um that we're in, that kind of helped me too to kind of be more confident and talk online just going to different calls and just different coffee chats and speaking to different people. Um, the three minute calls, it, I have to tell her thank you because that really helped me kind of a lot. So now it's more, a little more comfortable to me. I'm not as nervous as I was in the beginning. Abs um, ab well, hallelujah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I think the great thing is women, as women, we are not all conditioned to stand out and speak with our voice. And look at you, the fact that you've been turning up like I have, to talk and network and meet people and to tell your story, to help grow your business as a small business or even a solopreneur, as I am too, and to see what's happened as a result of what happened with your son, the impact it had on you and the difference you are now making to other people's lives to help make sure the same thing doesn't happen to them. How great is that and how cool are you? That That is wonderful. That actually you know, is my main goal is to help people and change people's lives and trying to just teach them and inform them of services that they might not be aware that that's available to them and affordable. So, so on that, yeah, can I ask you then? No, I did, I interrupted you. Go on. So no, you're fine. You're fine. All right. <laughs> so, uh, so on that, yeah, specifically, what what could it have been like if you didn't have the financial planning versus what you have prepared yourself to do to avoid that so that you're not in that position that you are trying to avoid people to be in? Tell me the what it could have been like and what it is, what the negative things could have been or disadvantages versus the advantages based on what you help people to do. Is and that clear sense. for a question? Yeah. Yeah, the disadvantages are basically you have bills that's comes every month. They don't stop. You have medicines that you have to buy if something happens. Um, you have your expenses. If you have a business, you still have business expenses that you have to pay and occur. And if you have something in place, you have a means of having some type of income or some type of financial cushion to help you until you're able to get back to your normal routine. Because if something happens, the average person is out of work maybe what, two to three months. So if you don't have that savings, that six months of savings, you know, you basically have no way to pay the bills or do anything that you need or take care of your family, your kids or personal needs, anything if, if you're taking care of a family member. And that could be in so many different aspects um, that I can do or teach people on. But it could be a parent, it could be a child, it could be you, it could be a spouse that you have to take care and be a sole provider if they're sick or they can't take care of themselves. And I think we all live our everyday busy lives and we don't think about the what if. So what if something happens just to one person in your household, if they are providing an income, if they can't work, even if it's for a short period of time, you have to rack up credit card bills to pay the bills. 
because you didn't have anything in place to cover that. Some people have benefits on their jobs. And like, for example, for my son, when I call for his benefits, they only pay 40%. Wow. Exactly. So if you're going to live into a certain lifestyle, you're used to a certain income. And a lot of people don't realize that sometimes the benefits that you do have on their job is limited. So you can get additional coverage from other people and other companies to match that 100% of your income if something happens and you have to take care of a family member or yourself, you couldn't work for a certain amount of time or extended amount of time. It just makes a difference. And it was it was an eye opener to me how, you know, things can change in a blink of an eye. And, you know, my goal, even if I could help one person prevent that health one, I mean, that's my goal is just to serve people and to help them and put them in a better position than, you know, I was in because I wasn't prepared for this. OK, so have you helped one person already? Um, since this hat, since that happened, no, not since that happened because I wasn't working for, oh my God, for maybe about two months, two, two, two and a half months. And I just had to start all over basically because, you know, I had to catch up on a lot of classes and trainings. And now I'm just really getting my foot back in the door. <laughs> okay. You said something really important there because as someone listening, You've just mentioned classes and training. So does this mean that you've been educating yourself on how to provide the service that you're offering? And if that's the case, because I see you nodding, can you tell us um, what you've done specifically so people know to take you seriously? Well, with I have continued education classes. Basically, I it's just not a like flyby thing. I have to take training and classes on how to do everything that I do and every. and take tests and I have to pass the test to get credits for that test so it's just like a building block a learning building block so I always have something to learn about and I could always further my career in financial services because you can always build on top of it build on top of it and that's my goal to build and build and build until I'm able to help everybody in every aspect of financial services you said everybody in every aspect is there any target audience you would specifically see yourself as being that put people who could particularly resonate with you or relate to you? I think mothers, moms, um, female, female entrepreneurs, biz, small business owners. Um, yeah, basically female business owners, busy boss moms. And um, yeah, that's important to me because I could resonate with them. Um, and I know how hard it is to kind of provide for a family and run a business. So I'm trying to make everybody life a little easier and do what I can to help and to help you have a financial plan in the event something happens to you or a family member. You have something in place where you can still provide for them or yourself. That's pretty commendable. Okay, on that... Do you have anything specifically right now that you can offer people who are listening that might be interested in what you offer? Specifically right now, life insurance. Um, we have affordable life insurance plans. Um, children life insurance is very a very great product. Yes, you can get a life insurance on your child. Uh, any child under age of 18, they can have their own life insurance policy. Um, and that'll help them grow. And, you know, as they get older, they'll have something that a cushion, something that they can use to go to school or, you know, start a, yeah, pay for college or start a business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And is this something that you have put in place or is it a work in progress for your son? It's a work in progress because before I got to, and that's another issue before I got to that step with him all this happened like yeah as I was working on everything for my kids all this happened so yes that's another that's another goal you know and I know I'm, I'm probably sound salesy or repetitious but yeah I wouldn't wish this on anybody like 
anybody. Yeah, so you can put a life insurance policy on a one-year-old, two-year-old. It's actually easier um, because that when you get older, we all put it off, we all put it off, and then you have health issues, and then your rates might be a little different, or you might have problems getting coverage. So I encourage everybody to put a policy on their kids until they're, you know, able to do for themselves or, you know what, most parents still pay for the policies when they get older, but if they get uninsurable, if they get any kind of health issues, they might not be able to get a policy. So the best thing to do is to put a policy in place for your children when they're younger, before they develop any issues or anything happen prematurely, you have something in place um, for that protection for them and for yourself. And you mentioned that's really good to know. So people can reach out to you for that. That sounds like something you can help them do. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned starting early when they're young mm -hmm. and you called it affordable life insurance. So would you say the, I don't know how you describe the average mo mother out there, but when you say affordable, how do people listening know that it's something they can afford? What's it based on? It's based on age. Um, gender, like I said, if something's, once you get older, you have different health issues, your rates might be a little different. Um, but the base rate for a child policy might be about $30, $40 for a child policy. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. That is absolutely affordable, unless I'm missing something. That's absolutely affordable. How can, how can that not be something that you'd want to do? I mean, if you think about how much people spend on servicing their car or paying for insurance on okay. that you yeah, compare it to a human being that you produced and or even one you care for it just sounds like a no-brainer to me well I think because they don't know but I think a lot of people when they hear oh you know life insurance agent or oh, you're just trying to sell me something well so we have this persona of um because you know I was like that when we was younger growing up the moms always ran from insurance guys or the insurance people when they came they well they, when I was younger they used to come to the house and collect the payments and they would always avoid them and the moms would always tell like yeah, tell them I'm not here so I think it's just embedded in people's minds just to, oh not talk to the insurance people so they don't realize and you know at the end of the day we're trying to help you help your family and protect your family I think that's the goal for me anyway that's the goal for me is to make sure you have everything you need and protection in place to take care of yourself and your family's needs. So if something happened, I don't, I don't want to get a phone call saying, I didn't know, you know, or you didn't tell me that. Um, so, I mean, and the conversation is free. So even if you have questions, you could always reach out, reach out to me. Um, you can always call me um and ask a question if you're not sure about something if you're curious there's no cost for a phone call for a conversation trust me I like to talk <laughs> okay on that <laughs> Claudine how can yes. people contact you contact me you can reach me on yes. my email I'm trying to my business email is let me make sure I give you the right one C S S M I T H zero two at F T dot New York Life dot com. You're gonna have to say that again. No, it's kind of long. C S S M I T H zero two at F T dot New York Life dot com. Cool. And can people call you? Sure. I mean, if you don't want to give out your number, you don't have to. My number is public record anyways, everywhere. <laughs> so what's your number? It's public record. 504-234-6455. Again, and that's my cell phone number. It's 504-234-6455. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much for telling us your story. Um, what hit me deeply was that you're not just someone selling a product you're doing it because of what you went through and that's the reason I reached out to you because that's the reason I do what I do I lost my mum and then as a result of that I want to help people to I want to help people to manage loss and 
I do that as a coach. I do that with emotional mapping. And that's why I could relate to it, what you were talking about. Um, that's it. If you've ha had a lived experience of something, that's why it's easier for people to understand why you're doing what you're doing. And I can see that you're speaking with passion and I admire you for that. So I wish you lots and lots of success and luck. Um, I hope that anyone watching this gets in touch with you and or if they think there's anyone that could benefit from what you've said, because maybe they're sorted already, that they reach out to you. So I have a question for you. Um, I know you just said about your mom. Um, when your mom passed, how did that change? How did your, it affect your life financially? So I was 25 at the time. And my father was responsible for four of us, um, his children. And um, my younger brother was just finishing his university degree at the time. He was in hospital. Uh, my mum was in hospital just when he had his 21st birthday and he was just graduating. So we were all fortunate enough that we were not seen as ch child dependents on our parents. Uh, timing wise, I think that was good for my father because he was running his own business, um, running a shop. And he spent a lot of time looking after my mum, taking her to dialysis to have her treatment done while we were wait waiting for a transplant the whole time. But I would say we were, time timing wise, quite fortunate that it didn't happen when we were under no. our parents' roof, um, so to say. So, um, in that regard, we were we were lucky, lucky if you can say that. You know, it could have been could have been different, but um, we just thank ourselves for my dad as well, that um, it wasn't the other way around where he had to then look after four young kids um, at a younger age. Yeah, that is hard, even just taking care of one. So he was still able to um, run his business and do everything and take care of your mother at the same time? Uh, he had to juggle it, um, but the support with the healthcare system was very good at the time. And um, he ran a, a corner shop and a lot of he ran a corner shop, so a lot of the community was available and understood when he had to close up immediately so he could yeah. go to her. And he often did that. Um, we lived, you know, on sort of a, on the edge for, for really 10 years, but it was it was OK. It was OK. Um, we're not complaining. I mean, obviously, the outcome wasn't good because my mother isn't here. However, I think um, somehow we just are the kind of family that had this mindset, which is you just make the best of a difficult situation. Oh. And I'm thankful for that because it's made me who I am today, which means I can run my business with passion just as you do with yours. And uh, that's why it's also important as a fellow woman um, entrepreneur or business owner um, to try to help people out there, whoever, even if it's one person that you've touched their heart and that you've made a difference because you don't want to be knowing that they didn't do something and they say, oh, I didn't know that exactly like you just yeah. said. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> that is the goal it's like yeah I don't want to yeah I want, people to know. I want to scream it from the rooftop like just scream it from the rooftops let's <laughs> scream it from the rooftops yeah I'll be back yeah. I'm just going up to my rooftop <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for sharing your story and for your time listen anyone watching out there who wants to reach Claudine she told you her number she's going to tell you again just now 504-234-6455 and my name is Claudine Smith you can probably find her on uh, Facebook on social media as well. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Yeah, exactly. So LinkedIn for any of you who prefer the more professional route. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for your time. Take care and keep in touch. Let us know how it goes, okay? Thank you, I will do. And thank you again for this opportunity. Oh, you're very welcome. Bye.